A tower that is part of a hotel has a square base of site 4 meters. So here's the base of the tower. It's square and its side is 4 meters. It has a roof in the form of a pyramid, so presumably this is a regular pyramid. The owners plan to cover the roof with copper. To find the amount of copper needed, they need to know the total area of the roof. So this pyramid sits on a square base, and since the tower doesn't taper, that square base has exactly the same shape as the square base at the bottom of the tower. So here's the pyramid that's on the top of the tower. The owners plan to cover the roof with copper. To find the amount of copper needed, they need to know the total area of the roof. So they need the area of these four triangular faces. They don't need the area of the square base that the pyramid is sitting on. The square base is a 4x4 four four square. They only want the area of the exposed part of the roof, which is four congruent triangles. Now, these triangles are actually isosceles triangles. Two sides are the same. This side here equals this side here say for this particular face and actually this side here with all the we four congruent or four identical isosceles triangles the base side of each triangle is four meters so to get the area of each of these triangles we would need say well say look we want to get the area of this triangle here we need its base and we need its perpendicular height which would be this distance here so this line here is running down this face of the pyramid from the apex or top of the pyramid down to the midpoint of this side. So we'd have to get this distance and then we'd say half the base, half times four times whatever this distance is. But to get this distance here, we would need to get the height of the pyramid. A surveyor stands 10 meters from the tower, measured horizontally and makes observations of angles of elevation from the point O as follows. The angle of elevation of the top of the roof is 46 degrees. So the angle of elevation is measured from this horizontal line here and it's 46 degrees to the top of the roof. An angle of elevation of the closest point at the bottom of the roof is 42 degrees. Now the closest point at the bottom of the roof is this point here. So this is the bottom of the roof and the angle of elevation is 42 degrees. The angle of depression of the closest point at the bottom of the tower is 9 degrees. So this is the closest point at the bottom of the tower. So the angle of depression is measured down from the horizontal and that angle is 9 degrees. Now we want to find the vertical height of the roof. So the vertical height is this distance here. So I'll just try and represent that in three dimensions. So here's a better picture of the pyramid and we are interested in the vertical height. So that would be the distance from the apex or top of the pyramid down to the center of the square base of the pyramid. The center of the square base could be found by getting the two diagonals of the square. So we're interested in this distance here. So how are we going to find this distance? Well, let's take a look at this green triangle. It's a right angle triangle. The hypotenuse extends from the observer to the top of the tower, to the top of the roof. So to complete this triangle, we have to construct it inside the tower. Okay, so the hypotenuse is the distance from O to the top of the tower. So we have this right angle triangle here. Um, we have an angle 46 degrees in this right angle triangle, but we need more, we need a side. Well, we do have the side. We have the side adjacent to 46 degrees. That's the distance from O to this point here, which is in the center of the tower. So we have this distance. It's 10 from O to the tower. That's the horizontal distance from the observer to the tower. But look, this point is in the middle or center of the tower, and the square base is 4 meters long. So this is an extra 2 meters. It's half of 4 is 2. So we have 2 plus 10 is 12 meters. So the side adjacent to 46 degrees is 12 meters. So I'm going to call the distance from here to here y. So let's get y first of all. So we need to bring in these two sides in a right angle triangle. This side is the side opposite 46, the side we're looking for. The side adjacent to 46 is what we're given. So we need to bring in the opposite and adjacent. That's 10. 10 of 46 is the side opposite 46, which I'll call y, divided by the adjacent, which is 12. 
So we find out y is 12 times tan 46, which is 12.426 meters. It's in meters because this distance here, the side adjacent to 46, is in meters. The next thing we do now is look at this right angle triangle here, this purple right angle triangle. What we can do is calculate the distance from here to here, but that's just the same as the distance from here to here. These distances, these two distances are the same. Let's call it x. So we have an angle of elevation of 42 degrees from O to the nearest point at the bottom of the roof, and the side adjacent in this is 10. The side adjacent to 42 is 10, so we're looking for this distance. I'll call it x. So in this right angle triangle, we see that tan of 42 is opposite over adjacent, x over 10. So x is tan 42. To three decimal places, that's 9.004 meters. So now we can find the height of the tower. Y is the total distance, the side opposite 46 degrees in the green triangle. So the height of the tower, this distance here, is just got by uh, getting Y minus X. So I'll write that up here. H is equal to Y minus X, which is 3.422. The next question I want to do is to find the total area of the roof. So as I explained to you earlier, that's the area of, of four triangles, the four congruent or equal triangles that make up this pyramid. So we're not interested in the square base. Let's get the area of one of these triangles. How are we going to get the area of this, this triangle here, say? Well, we see that its base is 4. We could call that B for base. If we want its perpendicular height, we need to get this distance here, as I explained to you earlier. That's the distance from the this top or the apex of the pyramid down to the midpoint of the base. And because this triangle is isosceles, that's, that means the two sides are the same. This line here from the apex down to the midpoint of the base is actually perpendicular to the base yeah, because of the symmetry of this isosceles triangle. So this distance here from the apex to the midpoint is the perpendicular height of this triangle. So how do we find this distance, this blue distance? Well, we notice that we can complete a right angle triangle inside the pyramid. This yellow distance is the distance from the center of the square base to the midpoint of this side. And this forms a right angle in here. So that suggests Pythagoras' theorem. So we look at this right angle triangle that's inside the pyramid. The height of it is just the height of the pyramid, which we got to be 3.422 meters. The distance from the center of the pyramid to the midpoint of one of the sides is 2. 2 is just half of 4. This yellow line, by the way, is meant to be parallel parallel to this side here. So we have a right angle triangle with two short sides given and we just have to find the longest side. I'm going to call the longest side capital H. It's the height of this face of the pyramid. So we see that H squared, H is what we're looking for, equals the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. So the height of that triangular face is 3.964 meters. Now we want the area, so we want the area of the four triangles. Well, the area of one triangle is half the base by the height, where B is 4 and H is 3.964. And we want four of these, so we have to multiply this by 4. So that's 2, 4 times a half is 2, times the base, which is 4, times the height, which is 3.422. Sorry, uh, H is 3.964. So to two decimal places, we get 31.71 meters squared. Now, if you want a final answer of two decimal places, it's a good idea to have three decimal places in all the previous calculations, and then round to two at the end. If all the angles measured are subject to a possible error of plus or minus one degrees, find a range of possible areas of the roof. Let's suppose that the angle of elevation to the top of the roof is alpha degrees. Then, since the possible error is plus or minus 1 degrees in this measurement, and the given measurement that we saw was 46 degrees, that means that alpha ranges from 46 minus 1, that's the minimum value that alpha can possibly, that's the true value of alpha can possibly have, up to 46 plus 1. That's what's meant by possible error of plus or minus 1 degree. So whatever measurement is made, 46 degrees in this case, the true measurement is within 1 degree 
is within 1 degree of 46 degrees, which means the true measurement is between 45 degrees and 47 degrees. It's the same situation for beta, because all the angles are subject to this error of plus or minus 1 degree. So whatever was measured for beta is, is such that the true value of beta lies within 1 degree of it. So the true value of beta lies between 42 minus 1, which is 41, and 42 plus 1, which is 43 degrees. So that's what's meant by this statement here, about all the angles being subject to a possible error of plus or minus 1 degrees. Notice, by the way, that the angle of depression doesn't actually come into this problem, at least not so far. We don't need to worry about the angle of depression. So we can forget about that. That's probably useless information that we don't need. Anyway, how is the variation in alpha and beta going to affect the height of the roof? So we need to consider the height of the roof before we can consider the area of the roof. So the height is going to affect the area. So this height here is going to affect the area because the square base isn't changing. The only thing that's going to vary is the height. And the area of the roof depends on the height. It was 3.422 as we saw earlier. You should see that the height of the roof will depend on this angle here. That's the difference between alpha and beta. When the difference between alpha and beta is greatest, then the measured height of the roof will be greatest. If the difference between alpha and beta is a minimum, then the measured height will be a minimum. So we need to maximize the difference between the angles, maximize alpha minus beta. So the bigger this angle alpha minus beta is, the bigger the measurement that will be gotten for the height of the roof, which in turn will mean we'll get the biggest measurement for the area of the four triangles, or the area of the roof. You can see that to maximize the angle alpha minus beta, we'd have to use a value of alpha 47 degrees minus the minimum value of beta. The minimum value that beta could be is 41 degrees. So the maximum value of alpha is 47, the minimum value of beta is 41. So that's just, that that combination will give us the maximum value of alpha minus beta. Now we're not actually interested in the value of alpha minus beta. You can see here it's actually 6 degrees. We're not actually that interested in it. All we've got to do is repeat the previous problem, that was question 1, but use a value of alpha of 47 degrees and a value of beta of 41 degrees. That will guarantee a maximum value for the height of the roof. So here's the situation for the green triangle where alpha is the maximum value that it can have. So the true value of alpha lies between 45 and 47. It's within one degree of the actual measured value from the previous part. So if alpha was 47 degrees, then we get the tan of 47 would equal y over 12, y being this distance here that you saw before. And the distance from here to here, as you saw before, was 10 plus 2. This was 2 because the square base was 4. So this is 2 here. So 10 plus 2 was 12. And we re rearranged that to get y equals 12 tan 47, which is 12.868. And then for beta, which is the blue triangle, we're interested in this distance here, which is x, which is the same as this distance here. So we just do the same as before. Tan 41 is x over 10. So x equals 1041, which is 8.693. So if we want to find h, we just, as before, we calculate y minus x, which is 4.175 meters. So that's the maximum height that h could have. That's assuming that alpha is indeed 47 degrees and beta is indeed 41 degrees. And from this maximum height, we can calculate the maximum area that the four triangles can have. So to get A max, we first of all have to get the area of one of these triangles. So we see as before, we have a right angle triangle inside the pyramid. The height now is 4.175. The base of this is still 2 of this right angle triangle. So we just use Pythagoras' theorem to get the perpendicular height of this particular triangle, for, of this face. I'll round this height to 4.18. I'll round it to two decimal places. So we just apply Pythagoras' theorem to this right angle triangle. We see that h squared equals 4.18 squared plus 2 squared, just like before. 
and if we calculate h, get the square root of the sum of these squares, we get 4.634 to three decimal places. So now to get the area, the maximum area, we get the area of one of the triangles, which is half the base by the height. So it's half the base is 4 by the perpendicular height, which is h here, 4.634. And that's one triangle, but we've got four triangles that make up this pyramid, four identical or congruent triangles, so we just multiply four by that. Now we have to repeat all this for the minimum possible values that, um, well, for the other extreme. Now the other extreme is the minimum height of the tower. What values of alpha and beta will lead to a minimum value of the height of the tower, because we want the range of possible areas of the roof. So we first of all have to get the range of heights. So we got the maximum height, which is 4.175, but for certain values of alpha and beta, we're going to get a minimum value for the height of the roof. So we want to minimize this angle in here actually. Minimizing this angle will minimize the resulting height. But how do we minimize alpha minus beta? Well, if we take Let's see now, if we could take the minimum value of alpha and the maximum value of beta. The minimum value of alpha is 45 degrees. So that means, you know, a sighting has been taken, taken from O to some point that's probably more than likely below the apex. Not necessarily, there's a possibility that 45 degrees is the exact value for alpha the exact true value for alpha. In that case, the line of sighting would be perfect from zero to the apex. But more than likely, much more likely is that that sighting is going to be to some point just below the apex, which gives rise to a value of alpha, a minimum value of alpha for, for the minimum possible value, which is 45. And similarly here for beta, well, if we want to minimize the height of the roof, we have to minimize alpha minus beta, which is the same as maximizing beta. So that might correspond to taking a sighting to a point that's a bit above. More than likely, we're going to be sighting some value. Uh, taking a sighting to some point that's above the lowest point of, of the roof. So in that case, beat is a maximum, so we have to make this 43 degrees. So we just basically repeat the calculation but for new values of alpha and beta. So we do these calculations again, but for alpha equals 45 and beta equals 43, that will minimize alpha minus beta and hence minimize the height of the roof. So we get these values, so we have to calculate y minus x to get that minimum value for the height of the roof. We get 2.675 meters. So we now need to get the perpendicular height of one of the triangles. So again, same as before, we use Pythagoras' theorem. So we calculate this distance, capital H, this blue distance here. So we get the square root of 2.675 squared plus 2 squared. So by Pythagoras, H is 3.34 meters. So the minimum area for this triangle here is half the base. The base is 4 times the height, which is 3.34. And as before, we've got 4 of these congruent triangles. So here's the range of values of A. So A, the absolute minimum value that A could have is 26.72 meters squared, and the maximum it could have is 37.07 meters squared.